Good evening and welcome to the definitive truth from Stephen Hartley. But it's not the evening time, it is daytime. Right, so I've been wanting to make a video um, basically containing all the truth that I have found as a result of embarking on a journey. And that journey began three years ago when I stumbled upon AJ Miller. And here was someone else um, talking about God and love and the soul like nobody else. His, um, you can see his sincerity and his faith and his strong belief but knowing and what this did for me was it confirmed a lot of, a lot of the things i had been thinking and adjusted and gave me new insight as well and the effect this had on my life was 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 quite amazing and I was being guided but after about a month of first stumbling onto AJ Miller I was connecting to God directly like the way you do connect to God which is three feelings so from AJ Miller three core truths Number one, God is a being. Our mother and father. God is a soul, a super soul. Number two, we are Children of God. But we are half a soul. And our other half is our soul mate. And that's what God is like. God is male and female, one. But the way we are at the moment, when we're in a physical body, we are just half. I here I am. I'm just half of me. And in the future, me and my other half will be one. It will still have female, and we'll still have male. Uh, what, what was the word I used before? Expressions of the soul. But we're different, completely different. But that's later. Okay, so so far we're still on what we got from AJ Miller. And the third one is that God's truth, so basically the truth, can be felt. Now, so three years ago through all the things that I'd found myself and I felt I'd sort of connected to God on some level. But I had, um, years before I had changed my mind and I thought God was everyone put together. And it kind of didn't work out great in my life because of that. I didn't really notice it. It was such a gradual descent, if you like. So coming back to this and seeing somebody else say that and then deciding to go with it. And this number three here, God's truth can be felt. I mean, that is, this just, it just enables you, doesn't it? To find out anything you want to find out. Right. Now, what did I do? So I connected to God. 
and it's quite weird because I was connected to God and I could ask God anything. <laughs> what do I want to know? But your mind is sort of blank at that point. And when you're feeling, the mind doesn't operate like it does because the feeling is the key thing. The mind is like a projection. So it's like a it's like a, a manifestation of the soul in a different form. Exactly like the physical world is. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm there feeling. So the first thing I learned was to receive love and to respond with love. I mean, but that's, hey, that's nothing new. So there were there there are the truths. So I, so I'm just going to list them, and, and I might have if I miss one, I'll just have to put it back in. So the first thing that comes to mind is <clears throat> I was looking at the Bible, and it was saying about how um, Cain was cursed with the mark of Cain, and so I came up with that. The mark of Cain is green eyes. And then you follow that, mark of Lamech, because if you go further on, Lamech takes two wives and he says, if Cain be avenged sevenfold, I'll be avenged seven sevenfold. Now that's all we've got. And there isn't even much more about that in, in the Gnostic text, the new books. But Mark of Lamech, blue eyes. Now when you take this thing about karma, and you think about how that would manifest. So if I went and I'm, say I'm a brown eyed person, I go and slap a green eyed person around the face, the karma that I'm going to receive for that is going to be seven times as, as much. And if I went and did it to a blue-eyed person, it's going to be seven, seven times as much, whether that's 49 or 77, I'm not quite sure. Probably 49. Okay, now let's look at where blue and green-eyed people are in the world. Well, at the moment they're all over the place. But if we go back, say couple of thousand years, um, I don't know if you would have seen any blue-eyed people outside of Europe. And a couple of thousand years ago, what, what, what was Europe? Um, green-eyeds, well they're quite rare aren't they? You don't get many green-eyed people, but you get quite a lot of people with greeny-brown hazel, which is my colour, maybe it goes slightly more green, but yeah. So then the Vikings come, raping and pillaging, finding it quite easy, blue eyes, and now they're all over the world. And you can look at wars and you can see how many people have died on each side. And you don't want to go to war with blue eyed people. Because they win. So there's a truth there. Now it's not like these other core truths. I mean these are amazingly important. But this is still a truth about our history. And it explains partly why it is the way it is. Okay. So what else did I found out? I found out the next thing I... And this actually might have been before this. Um, I felt we were in the mother of God. We are in the mother. I say mother, not the mother of God. We're in the mother. We're in the mother God. God is pregnant. God. We're in God's womb because we're babies. We're not even babies yet. We're so new into our existence that um, 
we're, we're still in the womb, basically. So here, seeing that mother and father are quite different, and it's actually not till very recently that I've really, and I haven't even made a video about that, I've really seen how the male and female are in the soul different. Okay, uh, so, and I found out I was Enoch. Well, that was after I found out I was the seventh Christ. Or well, am. So, it's not just one, it wasn't just Yeshua, and in fact, it's, that's what you should call him. So, just put here, uh, Jesus is the hallowed name. Jesus is God. Is name of God. Not made up by us. But was God's name before. And this is what Yeshua had found out. Yeshua. It was revealed to Yeshua. And there's bits in the scripture saying. <coughs> um, by the power of your name. So Yeshua is saying this. By the power of your name that you gave me. And Yeshua is also often saying. Well it says something. One point he's he's been reeling off. This is very near his glorification, and he's he's tell, tells people otherwise. The words I spoke are from the Father. So these people who think that the actual man is God, uh, ignore a lot of scripture. Let's just say that. So anyway, so I mean obviously A. J. Miller doesn't get this bit because he calls himself. Jesus and you know it's wrong there is power in that name said it said it in English uh, I was saying about me being seventh Christ and Francis of Assisi was the sixth Christ and uh, he did a lot which he gets absolutely no um, glory for um, and in fact, I do believe, and I can't prove this, that he didn't die when the history books say he died, that he faked his death and continued. And if you look back in the history, around that time, um, France and England were under one kingdom at that time. And Brittany had someone who was an heir to the throne called Arthur, all around this time. And I have always felt, well, long for a long time, that Francis is the Merlin character. And so this Arthur, again, they think he gets killed, but they do point out that no traces of his body were found. So there is a question mark around his supposed death. He had a wicked grandmother who wanted the other person to become king of England and France at this time. And then later on, a little bit later on, like 10 to maybe 20 years, uh, a, a guy appears from nowhere, Simon de Montford. He has knowledge of the, um, you know, what a king would be taught from a young boy, what do they call it, I can't remember, constitutional knowledge. And he he has a lot of good ideas which um, actually get uh, taken on by the kingdom and but after he gets killed but he dies a hero's death everyone loves him so I would say that that, Arthur, that Simon de Montford was that same Arthur and had been guided by Merlin Whew, right What else did I find out? So I'm still thinking back to quite a while ago now. Um, well, you know, I mean, 
there's so much what I mean what I've you know I've I've gradually got um, with my meditation I gradually kind of got further and further into the core of my being and feeling the heart it's the heart of the soul which is the power and um, so I might be skipping along a bit here but the question that was coming up for me a lot was so has God got a mum and dad? God got brothers and sisters? and the answer is yes is there a certain number? Is it infinite? There's a certain number. Until you get to source. And I don't know what happens when you go into source. And it's going to be a hundred billion years before we go into source. But there's definite difference between source and our mother and father God. So our mother and father God are about the age of this universe and now you probably know what I'm getting to so the universe is the physical manifestation of God Now you can imagine, to say it's 30 billion years old, it might be 15, but whatever. Pretty old, right? Imagine what, if you're going to exist for another million years, but you're still going to have stuff to learn all in that million years. And a billion years, you know, there's a lot we don't know. Remember, we're in the womb, we are babies. So, if... So God, the, phys the universe, is a physical manifestation of God. And within this universe, there's a hundred billion galaxies. And it's quite possible, not proven, but expected, that the centre of every galaxy is a black hole. And what is a black hole? A black hole is... There's nothing there, but it's very heavy. There's a lot of gravity. It's, it go go into another dimension. So you've got 100 billion of these in the universe. And God may well have 100 billion children. All right? So each one of us soul pairs is a universe in the black holes in this universe. And so this universe is a black hole in a higher universe. God's mum and dad. And God's mum and dad will have a hundred billion black holes. So God, Jesus, our mum and dad, has got a hundred billion kin. And I'd, I think it's about seven levels until you get to source. So it is massive, huge. Now, I'll, I'll do this now because it's related. In AJ's latest videos, he said something new which didn't come from me. He said there's um, six or seven Earths in the universe. Just like this. So they too are our brothers and sisters because God made them. And I had, as you know, you can check back on my videos, also oh, this is another thing that I felt was the truth, that um, there are 14.4 billion souls around this earth, that have had a life on this earth, or are currently in the spirit world, in this earth, or on the physical world. Now that is because, so we've got seven billion people, now remember soul, a soul is a, a pair, so a woman and a man, 
so that would be half the amount. And however many there is alive today, there has also been people who had a life. So that doubles it. But then you got all the people who miscarriages and 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 things like that who never quite got a life. And that is supposed to be equal to the number of people who did have a life. So it's like this half and half thing going on. Half half our brothers and sisters on this planet have never actually yet had physical life. It's interesting. So that comes up to 14.4 billion. Now if you say there's seven, seven Earths like this, seven times 14 is 100. Well, it's not. It's um, 98.4 times 7 is 2.8. So it's 100.8. So that's pretty damn close. Uh, so I'm going to write down. Okay, so the, so I got this from the hundred and forty-four thousand. Is all souls. All will be saved. Now they didn't dig the the zeros in the olden days. <laughs> so we just add six zeros and then and then you've got the hundred billion so times seven equals hundred billion for all all of us in the universe in our mother and father that's where we are we're in our mother right It's actually quite hard trying to think of all the things I've come up with in the last three years. And um, <laughs> at the moment they might seem a bit, you know, okay, so I can't prove them, but you're all going to come to these same conclusions because it is God's truth that can be felt. And this is how I've got this. I haven't made these up as such, things that have come to me, you know, even the thing of me being Enoch. I'm banging. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, when the truth hits, the truth hits. And and I could have actually been, I was more likely for that to resist it because I didn't want to feel it. I didn't, this felt scary. And this, before I even knew what it was. And then when I kind of stumbled onto what it was, I still could have run away from it. I didn't know I embraced it. And that's what this is about. It's about embracing what is. Okay. Correct that. Um, I don't know why I was writing this down. I just think sometimes, I don't even know if you can see that. Doesn't matter. Right, what else? What else have I done? I think a bit more recently. Uh, so, right, uh, 14, I'll just go through it quickly. So, 2014, started the meditating, doing two weeks break and then going for it, reaching high levels, learning, you know, I mean, love is everything. Love is the only thing of substance. Obviously, I was going through my own personal life. I was getting to younger and younger memories, stuff to do with my family, which, you know, isn't, interesting to the rest um, my soulmate I changed often but kind of went back to one that I was that stood out and stuck with that and I've been getting some amazing feelings from that and you know I have found that a lot of the stuff I've come up with I've had a difficulty in in explaining now, a lot of the stuff is about the Bible, so I'll just put here then, Adam is Yahweh. You know, that Yahweh is not the name of God. Jesus is. Adam considered himself Lord. He started being, he's being called Lord. Genesis 4 is on about Adam. With the help of the Lord, I gave him birth to a baby. 
Eve's talking about Adam. There's a big one. Subjugation of women. From the start, Adam doesn't want to bow to Eve, who is possibly a later creation, a higher creation slightly, if it's a later creation, then it's slightly higher. And this is parallel with the um, Satan will not bow to men. He, he's been told, you know, you're made of fire, you were made first. This is my analogy with with the soul. Male equals sun. Female equals planets. So light emitting things is male, it's simple, strong. Female, they are the substance, the beauty. The complexity. Sun bows to planets. Sun serves the planets. Men serve females. We come up with the ideas, they have the veto. This is just recent. Men, ideas, women, I always spell women wrong, veto. <coughs> so they're the boss. But what we had from the beginning, from the very beginning, was subjugation of women. There is putting... We were doing what is anti-God. We were, we were going against how God had done it. Which is what we've always done. And um, the uh, true satisfaction... only found with God. Now Buddha, he had a different way. He was saying that um, there is this cause of satisfaction, with, uh, dissatisfaction. I can't remember how I put it now. I'll put it in a tweet somewhere. But that um, to know the cause of satis the cause of dissatisfaction is because you know I haven't got God, and Buddha didn't find God back then. He he found a way uh, without God, which is okay if you want it to take a thousand times longer than than you could with God. Okay, I'm pretty sure. We're all lazy enough <laughs> to choose the thousand times faster way. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. So I didn't write there black yeah. black holes is each of us. Um, if you ever get to actually feel the truth of this, then it, um, it will initially feel claustrophobic. Um, because um, when you include source in this, you're a black hole in this universe, which is a black hole in another universe, black hole in another universe, black hole in another universe. Seems very big, but when you take that truth on, and you feel your connection all the way to source. Yeah. I mean, there is no escaping that. That is what you are. Just remember it's loving. It's... It's like being covered with your duvet when your brother and you're saying get off and he's not answering you. You know, there is a feeling. But knowing that that is where you're meant to be, where you're safe, that's home. It's okay. It's okay.
So I don't know if I'm being any clearer by doing it like this, and I'm probably missing loads out. You know, the truth is important. To understand the truth of what you are, where you are, where you're going, um, it makes all the difference because it enables you to to see what's important. And um, yeah. And I'm uh, kind of running out of steam here, uh, so there may be a part two. I'm not sure. But that's it for now.